Hello everybody, Roger Hex here. Today I'm going to show you one of the most versatile asset mods that I think is in Transport Fever 2, and that is Joe Fried's Bioducts. I use this mod on pretty much every build, sometimes quite extensively, like Victoria. Now unfortunately this mod isn't available on Steam, so instead you need to get it from transportfever.net. If you haven't used mods from here before, it's quite simple. It basically has what they call a file base. It's pretty much a listing of mods submitted by the community, similar to Steam Workshop. Sometimes the mods on here are also on Steam, but quite often they're not. So you tend to find some real hidden gems on here. I've put a link to Joe Fred's Viaducts in the description of this video. Once you get on the page, scroll down to the download section and download it. For installing it, if you've never installed a mod manually, you can find instructions for that on the Transport Fever 2 wiki. Once it's installed and we've enabled it in the map, we can use it by finding this category in our assets. It's this little flower pot thing. And once we're in here, there's a whole lot of settings. So at the very top, we've got this collection of all the different types, all the shapes that you can have. There's quite a lot in here. So starting at the very beginning, set all the settings back to normal. We've got these little narrow sort of viaduct arches. And then the, the little extra ones for each type of letter with the slashes are like a, a degree of incline, so it slopes a little bit. So you can see the, there's a you can see a bit of a difference there. Uh, these little hats are just the arch part without the rest of the, the square block work. So they could be good for adding some accenting or, or decoration around the arch itself. Uh, you've got some fatter ones, you've got filled in ones, you've got plain straight walls, which these sort of things are where it gets the most versatile. So you can just, you can, you can make pretty much anything out of these wall pieces. There's some fatter blocks as well. And most importantly, ceiling or floor pieces, which is again, very useful. There's also a slightly wedge shaped one, some sort of shorter, shorter wall pieces, good for like tops and edges, some random little decoration pieces, some fence pieces, Again, these are these are one of the one of my favourite pieces of this of this asset set, and like a bigger fence type thing. So then, for each one of these, there's all kinds of different materials that you can use for the fences. Like these, the material choice gives you a whole lot of nice, vibrant colours. So you'll probably recognise the yellow colour from my Metrolink series. All of the other pieces are, the textures are like just regular variety of different brickwork textures, concrete, a few different types of concrete, some nice wood textures as well, can be useful for making a wooden fence for a bit of variety, some metal textures and some, some nice gothic ones. I particularly like this one, it, it looks very detailed and nice. So already with that, you've got quite a lot. You've got this little variant thing here, which for them, for most of the things, it just makes them, if they're like tall pieces, like the viaduct arches or this, it just makes them even taller. So you can build the build up the side of very tall buildings if you want to. For the fences, there's 
depending on what material you select and what variant you have, you get quite a good choice. So here's, we've got the, the little curved edge fence, but then some of these ones down here, you've got little concrete railing fixture type things, which are also quite nice. And then right at the bottom, you've got these wonderful pieces of steelwork, which I'd only, I only discovered recently, and I'm definitely going to be using these to build some of the bridges between Deansgate and Cornbrook on the Metrolink line when I get to that part. Sizing wise, you can make them fairly big. Depends on what the asset is. You only have sort of like two axes to scale in, so the directions in which it scales kind of depends on what type of asset, what type of shape you pick from up here. So like the walls, you can you can make them really long and really fat, or you can make them really skinny. Yeah, it's quite quite a good level of control over the sizing here. Some of the other, like the, the ceiling piece, the, the length and the width control, like just the, the surface area. You don't really get any control over the thickness of this piece. The other fairly good thing about this is all of these pieces snap to the tracks. So one of the things I did in Victoria Station was given some tracks. I snapped this to it to sort of hide the ballast and it's got this little tilt slope thing. You can rotate these up to eight degrees, unfortunately only in their sort of main axis. So you can see obviously that's that's the wrong axis, the wrong direction. So you've got this no rotation all the way up to eight degrees. And then these ones here are the negatives in the, like for the same units. So this is one, two, three, four, negative instead of positive. And what you can also do is you can control the height based on the snapping quite precisely. So you've got the, the meter units, which is probably too much for what we want here. Then you've got the tens tens of centimeters, so 20 centimeters, 30, 40 up to 90, and it's single centimeters as well. So with enough a little bit of fiddling, you can find the right just the right amount of movement. It's harder than it looks actually. It takes a little bit of trial and error to find the right one. probably just my slope is not I think my track is on a slope somewhere between two and three which isn't great tell you what for the sake of this I will flatten something out so if we turn this rotation off there we go then we see Get a nice, uh, with nice track there with no ballast. Could maybe go slightly higher, a few couple of centimeters higher maybe, and then cut out the sleepers as well. So then you just have a piece of track on some concrete, and it's still working track. So. That's something I like doing with this. Uh, the final setting down at the bottom is it's a little bit hard to get used to because the like the width and the length you start off with like some fairly increasing numbers 
and then you get to here and then it starts decreasing. So with these ones you start off with a bit of an offset from the track. You can see it's starting to get closer to one side. And then as soon as you jump up to, to these ones here, it goes the other direction. And then you hit the letters and the jumps start getting a lot bigger. And then we end up over there. So that's quite useful if you want to do like little trackside walls with maybe something like this. You can offset them some amount from the track to give a bit of space, give it a bit of rotation. And maybe lower it, make sure it's actually in the ground. And now you've got a bit of a trackside wall. It's easy easy to place because of, because of the snapping, but it can be a bit annoying with the little rotation setting because it can only rotate in whole degrees, and it's quite rare that the terrain is actually on an incline that is a whole degree. So that's a very brief summary on all of the things that this magical mod can do. As I said, I use this in all kinds of places in my builds, all of the Victoria buildings. I built the, I built the arena out of these pieces. If you haven't tried this out yet, I really recommend you do. It really helps to take detailing to another level in terms of custom structures and it also if you haven't been downloading any mods from transportfever.net it opens the door to that whole additional library of, of brilliant assets from from other modders who for one reason or another haven't put them on steam so enjoy